Hello friends, welcome to our Mathematics Student Support Program for Grade 8. Our topic for today is Statistics, Part 2. You will remember that in the previous lesson, we have learned how to interpret pie charts. In this lesson, we will learn how to draw a pie chart. Now for this lesson, you will need to remember how to measure angles using your protractor. In grade seven, you had learned how to measure and draw angles using your protractor. So angles in a pie chart. Consider the table below. It gives the information about the favorite fruit which the students of grade eight Gerbera prefer. So you have your table here, mango, you have 12 students, kiwi, six students, avocado, five, banana, eight, and apple, five. Now we are going to use this information to draw our pie chart. Remember that the sum of angles in a pie chart is 360 degrees. Now the total number of students will be 12 plus 6 plus 5 plus 8 plus 5, which gives us a total of 36. So we have 36 students in the class. Now these 36 students will represent 360 degrees, that is the sum of angles in a pie chart. One student will represent 360 degrees over 36, that is 10 degrees. So each student will represent 10 degrees. We are now going to construct a second table where we will include the angles representing the different fruits. So for 12 students, it's going to be 12 times 10 degrees. Remember, one student represents 10 degrees. So this gives me 120 degrees. For kiwi, it's going to be 6 times 10 degrees, 60 degrees. Avocado, 5 times 10 degrees, 50 degrees. For banana, 8 times 10 degrees, 80 degrees. And for apple, 5 times 10 degrees, that is 50 degrees. We are now going to use this information to construct our pie chart. So if you recall, to draw an angle, First, I need to draw a line. I have my vertex. I use my protractor to measure the required angle. And then I'm going to draw a line. So here, for example, if I need to measure an angle of 120 degrees, so using my protractor, I'm going to read 120 degrees and I draw a line. So for the first sector, mango, it is in fact 120 degrees. So I have my sector here measuring 120 degrees. Mango, 120 degrees. Now for kiwi, I measure 60 degrees. So here it is, kiwi, 60 degrees. In the same way, I'm going to measure for avocado, 50 degrees. Banana, 80 degrees and for the last one it should be 50 degrees you need to check if it is 50 degrees it means that you have correctly measured the other sectors if ever you do not get 50 degrees here the last angle for the last sector this means that you have most probably not measured one of the sectors correctly so the last one is apple 50 degrees so this is my pie chart, but it is not complete. You need to give a title to your pie chart. So the title here is Favorite Fruit of Students of Grade 8 Gerbera. There is a caution for you. Always label your sectors and do not forget to insert the appropriate angles as you work. Do not wait until you have measured all the different sectors and then you start labeling and writing the angles. You might forget which sector corresponds to which angle. You must also include a title for your pie chart. Second example, 
The frequency table below shows the number of rainy days per month for the first six months of the year 2016. So for example, for January, we had 15 rainy days, February 12, and so on. I need to express the number of rainy days in February as a fraction of the total number of rainy days during the first six months of the year. Give your answer in its lowest terms. Part B, express the number of rainy days in March and April as a percentage of the total number of rainy days during the first six months of the year. Part C, what is the ratio of the number of rainy days in January to that in March. Give your answer in its simplest form. And part D, draw a well-labeled pie chart using the above frequency table. So let us have a look at the solution. This was the given table. Part A, I need to express the number of rainy days in February as a fraction of the total number of rainy days during the first six months of the year. So the total number of rainy days will be the sum of all these different numbers. So I have 15 plus 12 plus 10 plus 12 plus 16 plus 7, that is 72 in total. The number of rainy days in February was 12. Now, if I have to express this as a fraction, I will have 12 over 72 and reduced to its lowest term. This gives me 1 over 6. Part B. Express the number of rainy days in March and April as a percentage of the total number of rainy days during the first six months of the year. So in March and April, I'm going to have 10 plus 12, that is 22 rainy days. Now, the number of rainy days in March and April as a percentage of the total number of rainy days during the first six months of the year will be 22 over the total, that is 72, times 100%. That is 35 over 9%. In fact, we are interpreting information from the frequency table, and this was something which we had learned in grade 7. Part C. What is the ratio of the number of rainy days in January to that in March? Give your answer in its simplest form. So in January, we had 15 rainy days. In March, 10. So the ratio is 15 is to 10. And reduced to its lowest term, that is dividing by 5, I have 3 to 2. Now, for part D, I need to draw a pie chart representing the given frequency table. So in all, I have 72 days. This means that 72 days will represent 360 degrees. One day will represent 360 degrees over 72, that is 5 degrees. So to find the angle representing the different month, we have 5 degrees times 15, that is 75 degrees for January. February, 5 degrees times 12, 12 rainy days, that is 60 degrees. March, 5 degrees times 10, 50 degrees. April, 5 degrees times 12, 60 degrees. May, 5 degrees times 16, 80 degrees. And for June, 5 degrees times 7, that is 35 degrees. Remember, you can check whether all these will add up to 360 degrees. So now to draw the pie chart. The first angle for January is 75 degrees. So using your protractor, you measure an angle of 75 degrees. That is January, 75 degrees. 
Then for February, 60 degrees, so you measure 60 degrees. Similarly for March, 50 degrees. Now for April, you measure an angle of 60 degrees. Then for May, you measure an angle of 80 degrees. And for the last one, June, it should be 35 degrees. You can check whether it gives an angle of 35 degrees. So here's our pie chart. Remember, you need to give a title to this pie chart. So the title is Number of Rainy Days During the First Six Months of the Year. You can also make use of the mathematical software GeoGebra or Excel to draw your pie chart. This is an example of the pie chart drawn using Excel. So I have used the frequency table given in the previous example. You have some exercises for you to practice. So the first question is, Mr. Olaf has several types of fruit plants in his garden as shown in the frequency table given below. So you have your frequency table, part A, which fruit plant does Mr. Ola have more in his garden? Part B, express the number of banana plants as a fraction of the total number of fruit plants in the garden. Part C, express the number of avocado plants as a percentage of the total number of fruit plants in the garden. And part D, you need to use the above information to draw a pie chart. Question two. Mrs. Mia bakes and sells cakes in her shop as shown in the frequency table below. So you have your frequency table. You need to draw a pie chart to represent the above information. You have some links for you to practice some more on how to draw pie charts. So friends, in this lesson, you have learned how to draw pie charts given a frequency table. In the next lesson, you will learn how to calculate mean, mode, and median. So friends, in this lesson, we have learned how to draw pie charts given a frequency table. In the next lesson, you will learn how to calculate mean, mode, and media. So until we meet again in the next video, it's goodbye from me.